Hi folks, in this episode I'm going to talk about kernel. Um, this is another solution concept and here's uh, the description and then I'm going to work on a simple example. So consider any uh, coalitional game G and take any player I uh, from the set of players N and a payoff vector X. So we're going to define a concept, a new concept, a surplus uh, well, this is the name we give, surplus of player i over player j with respect to x. All right, once again, surplus of player i over player j with respect to payoff vector x. We denote it by s, subscript ij, so surplus of player i over j with respect to x. So how do we define it? Well, it maximizes, um, you know, it's the maximum element of this set. What is included in this set? Well, in this set, we basically look at the deficits, all right? Um, well, this is the, the value, the worth of the coalition S minus um, the total payoff this coalition S gets with respect to the payoff vector X. So this is deficit, all right? Positive or negative or zero, we don't know. And then we take the max of this, which is a maximum deficit. Well, however, we do not look at uh, this deficit for every coalition. We look at the only the coalition S, which includes player I, but not J. All right, so that's very, very critical. So out of all possible coalitions, player I must be in S and J shouldn't. All right, so what is SIJX really, sort of intuition? Well, it's the maximum player I can gain without cooperating with player J, right? Player J doesn't exist in any one of those coalitions. And so this is the... Remember, this is the, uh, the value minus the total sum. So that is the maximum, so, and, and then we take the maximum. So that is the maximum, so some of them may be negative, uh, some of them will be positive or zero. So that's the maximum player I can gain without cooperating with player J, all right? Given that obviously everybody else uh, in this coalition and in the grand coalition takes uh, according to their uh, payoffs with respect to this payoff vector X. Um, put differently, SIJ is a way to measure player I's bargaining power over J, all right? Well, why it is a bargaining power? Well, why it is a bargaining power? Why, why this intuition? Well, hopefully it's going to be clearer in our numerical example, but keep that in mind. SIJ measures kind of player I's bargaining power over J. All right, and then we define the kernel of a super additive game G. We denote it, uh, you know, some sort of script K G as the set of payoff vectors x such that for any pair of players i, j, one of the followings must be true. If one of the followings is true for any a pair i, j, well then this payoff vector x is in the kernel of this game g. So what are those conditions? Condition one, the surplus of player i over j with respect to x is equal to surplus of player j over i with respect to x. So interpreting these, uh, you know, sij as a player i's bargaining power over j, it basically says player i's bargaining power over j is equal to player j's bargaining power. So they have equal bargaining powers, all right? Second, SIJX is greater than SJIX. If they're not equal, well, one is going to be greater. Well, but if it is greater, well, then we have to have that XJ equals this. Well, what's the intuition behind this? It basically says if the bargaining power of player I over J is greater than player J over I, so in a sense, player I has a, you know, a bigger bargaining power uh, over J, well, then... Uh, this threat should be non-credible because player J is already getting what he could get if he were alone, all right? So his bargaining power is going to be useless because, or 
threat is going to be useless because player J is already getting what he could get if he were alone. All right? And symmetrically, maybe Sijx is less than Sjix. Well, that means player J's uh, bargaining power is, is, is bigger or stronger than player I. And in this case, therefore, uh, this bargaining or this, this threat of you know, being a stronger bargaining, having a stronger uh, bargaining power is going to be non-credible, can be non-credible only if the weak player, player I this time, is getting the payoff, which he would get if he were alone. All right. So once again, if for any pair ij, one of those three conditions hold, well, we call that this payoff vector x is in the kernel of, 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 of game g. All right. So uh, one important remark I put to, uh, I forgot to put it. Um, the kernel contains all outcome vectors that where no player has bargaining power over another. And um, in terms of existence, uh, oh yeah, the kernel always contains nucleus. Therefore, it is non-empty. All right, so the kernel of game G is a superset of nucleus of game G. All right, and so it's not empty. Remember, uh, every game, uh, the super additive games always have a nucleus, and so therefore uh, uh, every super additive game has a kernel. Uh, and so if you find nucleus, well, then uh, it is also a kernel. But the thing is, finding kernels are easier than finding nucleus. Uh, let's give an example. All right, so here is the example for kernel. I'm using a simple example, two players. Uh, well, it's, well, the mechanic is the same. Three players is just going to make calculations a bit more complicated, but the idea is exactly the same. And so for that reason, I selected our two player game. Remember, um, there were two players. If each player is alone, um, their worth is five. But if they're together, well, then their worth is 20. And remember, we were talking about two payoff vectors. X is the unfair one, 15, 5. Y is a fair one. Both of them are stable, by the way. And so uh, now let's calculate um, the kernels uh, of, uh, of this game. Or at least, I'm sorry, let's see if X and or Y in the kernel of this game G or not. So how do we do that? Well, we first need to calculate these guys for x and y. So what is s1 to x? Well, it's the following. Remember, uh, player 1's uh, surplus over player 2. So here, I first need to understand what are the uh, coalitions um, where player 1 is in, but 2 is not. So remember, there are four possible coalitions. So player 1 is in, but 2 is not. And so there's only one such coalition, which is this. So here, therefore, there's just one S. So what is this? So S is basically equal to, let me just write it here, uh, this set. Okay. So what is V of S? V of 1 minus summation K in S X K. Well, again, it, there's only one player. So this number is V of 1 is equal to 5 and x1 is equal to 15. Remember, that's the unfair one. So it's therefore minus 10. So s12 x is minus 10. I mean, you don't really need to take any max because there was only one uh, uh, coalition s in this set. Well, what about s21? So again, player 2 is in a coalitions that player two is in, but one is not. Two is in, one is not. So there's only one coalition, which is this one. So once again, what is the value, the worth of this coalition minus x2, which is five, five minus five, zero. All right, once again, we don't really need to take a max because there's only one coalition. So s12 is minus 10, s21 is zero. So the question is, Remember, it has to satisfy, uh, you know, the x has to satisfy one of those three for any ij, but nice thing, there's only one two player, right? Player one and two. So 
player one and two, uh, are their bargaining powers the same? No. In fact, player one's bargaining power, so we have the following, S1, 2 is less than S2, 1. All right, so the second player's bargaining power is higher than the first player's bargaining power. So in that case, uh, the first player, so it's kind of this one, the first player is the weak player. And so do I have Xi equal uh, V of I, which is five? No, because Xi is 15 and it's not equal to five, right? So what does that mean? That means this unequal stable allocation is not in the kernel. Well, makes sense, right? I mean, because uh, uh, clearly, I mean, again, it's like it is stable. Nobody has incentive to deviate. Uh, but, you know, one player has a strong bargaining power over the other. And although the players are actually, um, how to say it, uh, symmetric. Well, let's calculate it for uh, payoff vector uh, y. Well, S1, 2. Well, once again, there's only one uh, coalition S uh, where player 1 is in and 2 is not, and it's this one. So therefore, it's going to be 5 minus uh, y1. Uh, so what is it equal to? It's minus 5. Okay? Um, so I'm sorry, it's just minus 5. Well, symmetrically, S2, 1 is also the value of uh, this coalition 2 minus uh, Y2, uh, which is nothing but minus 5 again, because Y2 is 10. So therefore, it's also minus 5. And it satisfies this condition. Player 1's and 2's bargaining power are identical. And so you know what? X... Uh, 15, 5 is not element of kernel of this game G. However, Y, which is 10, 10, is in the element of kernel G. Okay. I want to come back to this intuition that uh, we mentioned. The SIJ is basically measuring the bargaining power of player I over J. It's like... Um, well, what does it really, you know, how does it really work here? So let's look at X, for example. Um, player 1's bargaining power over 2 is like minus 10, um, and 2's over 1 is 0. It's like, well, think it that way. So again, if you go back to the original payoff vector, uh, this minus 10 is actually the following. It's like player 2 can actually break the partnership with player one. In this case, player one is going to lose minus uh, 10, I'm sorry. Okay, so remember V of one minus what he's getting. So what he's getting under the coalition. So he's getting 15. Uh, if we form the grand coalition, I, uh, player one is getting 15 under the grand coalition. Uh, but if, if player two breaks this coalition, player one is going to be alone. And in this case, he can only achieve five. So therefore, if player two breaks the uh, coalition with player one, uh, well, then player one uh, will lose 10 units of payoff. However, if player one breaks with player two, player two will lose nothing. Huh. So you know what? Keeping this grand coalition is more important for player one than for player two because player one has more to lose. So that's the bargaining power. Player two can threaten, well in this game again we don't know how these players play this game but it should be the case that player two threatens player one saying that you know what you're getting 15 in this grand coalition. Screw you, I mean I can break this and basically play this game all alone. Uh, it's, it's, it's gonna be the same thing for me, but for you, you're gonna lose a lot. So you know what, I'm not gonna accept that. So you have to give me something more. In that sense, 15-5 is not, shouldn't be a sort of an optimal solution. And therefore it's not selected in the kernel. All right, so that's why this three requirements are imposed. Uh, if the bargaining powers 
uh, of one party is stronger than the other one, well then the, at least the threat should be uh, sort of uh, non-credible. But here it is highly credible because the threat, uh, I'm sorry, the, the payoff of player one is, is 15. However, what he could achieve alone is just five. All right? Here, however, uh, if they break player one or two, if they break the grand coalition, they both will lose and they will lose exactly the same amount. So in that sense, their bargaining power are the same. I mean, you know, if one threatens the other, he knows that he has exactly the, he's exactly in the same shoes with himself. So that threat is, is going to be pointless. And so, you know what, uh, that, that payoff, uh, Y, I mean, makes sense. So it is in the kernel. Okay, so that is the idea of uh, kernel. I think it's very appealing. Yes, it's very tedious in terms of notations, in, some, in terms of calculations, but I think it makes a lot of sense. So it would be very good to work on all those stuff with a slightly more complicated environment with three players, for example, just to make sure that you can apply all that under a little bit more complicated environments. But as I said, calculating kernel can kernel is easier than uh, nucleus because for kernel, all you have to do just to make a guess and then verify if it is in the kernel or not. But in the nucleus, uh, making a guess is pointless because you're supposed to find the best uh, payoff vector out of infinitely many. All right, so it's solving a maximization problem. Here, it's not a maximization problem. You just make a guess and verify it. Okay, I hope that was clear.